Welcome to another 10-day trend dominated by high pressure. But could a typhoon play a part in finally mixing things up? More on that in a moment. First of all, let's get back to the area of high pressure in question. It's dominated our weather for a while. Run through the next five days and it continues to dominate. It also, crucially, continues to not move very far. It is anchored to the west of northwest Scotland and doesn't move hardly at all, really, over the next four or five days. And around high pressure, the winds come in uh, clockwise and so drawing in the cool breeze along these eastern coasts in particular. It has been a particularly chilly and grey week and we're not going to see a great amount of change with those breezes bringing in the cloud. Now, large parts of central England have stayed pretty glum during Wednesday. That cloud overnight spills back in across Wales, across much of Scotland. It should burn back a little more readily during Thursday. The air is getting slightly dry, but then it comes back again on Thursday night and into Friday before hopefully dispersing a little more by the time we get to Friday. So I'm a little bit more optimistic that parts of the East Coast will be a bit brighter on Friday, but that wind will still be coming in uh, around Lincolnshire, uh, Norfolk, down towards Kent from the coast. So it is still going to feel pretty fresh, but it should at least turn a little sunnier by Friday. So in terms of temperatures, that big east-west contrast will continue with the sunniest skies in the west, low 20s. By the time we get to Friday, with a bit more sunshine uh, in the east, perhaps, and also slightly cooler air for the west, there's not as big a disparity, but it will still be warmer and sunnier in the West. And that trend looks like continuing even into the weekend. These are the temperature anomalies. So the difference from average uh, over the course of Saturday, Sunday and Monday. And you can see it's western areas with the oranges. That's where temperatures are above average. And the blue hints there along that east coast as that east coast keeps that breeze from the sea. So those eastern areas always staying cooler and that variation continuing even into the early part of next week because as we've seen, that area of high pressure continues to dominate and control our weather. And with high pressure, the air is sinking, remember? So again, it's going to be predominantly dry. Just the chance that that cloud could be thick enough for a little bit of drizzle like it was on Wednesday morning. And there is the small chance on Sunday uh, of a shower breaking out over hills and mountains across northern England and Scotland. But for the vast majority, the weekend will be dry. Quite a bit of sunshine around. Always the potential for that mist and low cloud to come back on some eastern coasts. And as we've seen, it will be cooler here with the warmest conditions in the west. Any signs of any change into next week? Well, the short answer to that is not really. High pressure is likely to dominate. It's a big area of high pressure. It's not shifting very far. And there's nothing to shift it because the jet stream is fairly weak, an arm of it pushing up there over Greenland and Iceland. But that's not the only arm of the jet stream. What's happening is it comes out of North America. It's, it's splitting and an arm of the jet stream going to the south, the south shifted element taking the low pressure systems across Iberia into the Mediterranean, hence why it is so showery here. But we've got high pressure at the surface, but not only at the surface, also high up, and that's acting like a stone, just blocking the jet stream, and that is why it is splitting. And when the pressure pattern is set like this, it, it takes a lot to shift it. And there isn't a lot of signs of things shifting too much as we go through much of next week. That blocked weather pattern likely to continue. These dark reds, that's indicating that, that blocked weather pattern, the dates going along the bottom. And this is the stacked probabilities, so going from zero to 100%. And look at that, solid dark red line, 100% chance of this blocked pattern lasting into next week. Uh, signs subtly of it dropping to 80, 90%, but still it is the most likely scenario that that blocked weather pattern will continue even towards next weekend, the following weekend. Now, of course, Blocked weather pattern doesn't mean that the high pressure is completely in control, sitting right over the UK. The weather pattern can be shifted, uh, just slow moving is, is basically what this uh, indicates. And there are some signs towards the back end of next week that that high might just start to waddle away a little bit towards the west. This is the European model, the uh, deterministic model run, the main computer model run. And there's the high pressure out here. You can just about make it out there. There's the UK. This is for uh, next Wednesday night into Thursday morning. And just a subtle shift as we fast forward to Thursday night into Friday that that high is just heading away a little bit more as we head towards the weekend, even stronger 
weakest signal, that high, is just starting to drift further away. Now, it's still kind of controlling our weather. It still means a lot of dry weather. But as it shifts here, just opening the door to cooler conditions spreading down from the north, but also the potential for a low to slip in underneath and drag up some warmer air, some orange colours there, but also just a few dots. I'll, I'll zoom in, actually. Just a few dots there suggesting some showers may be coming up from the south. So this is... The following weekend, so not the weekend coming, the one after as that high shifts away, just perhaps opening the door to either cooler conditions from the north or warmer but showery conditions spreading in from the south. Either or both of those conditions could occur. Now, that's when we look at one computer model, the main uh, computer model. But of course, uh, if you watch these 10 day trends regularly, you know it's more useful to run the model many, many times and generate what we call an ensemble. And here you get lots of different members, lots of different solutions. And they're suggesting that those possibilities of the uh, showers and cooler air coming down from the north or that showers coming up from the south are viable solutions. There are many of them. Now, you can't really see them here but what we can do is translate these postage stamps as they're known these different ensembles into a probability and give a chance of those things happening and that's what we're looking at here now these maps show the chance of just one millimeter of rain falling through next week now we start on monday with a lot of white uh, next to zero chance of seeing any precipitation, any rainfall across the bulk of the UK. Notice there's a, just a little orange blob there across uh, eastern Scotland, the hills and mountains here. There is the chance of sparking one or two isolated showers on Monday. But I'm showing you this to, to show the back end of next week as that ha high potentially slips away to the west. A signal here that across the south, the chance of rain is increasing up to, what, uh, 20 to 40 percent. And the same goes further north, even hints there, again, across eastern Scotland, that the, uh, uh, the percentage, the, the likelihood is increasing up to maybe 50 or 60 percent. But notice still across these central areas, we're still in that pale green category. So still a 10 percent chance of seeing any rainfall at all. So there's that opportunity there. It either, it either will be coming up from the south or perhaps coming in from the north or everywhere may stay dry. But that's the thing we'll be looking at towards the back end of next week. If that high does start to slip away, will we see cooler and showery uh, conditions coming in from the north or potentially warmer, more humid showers uh, coming up from the south? So yes, a largely dry week next week, but that's something we'll be looking at towards the back end of next week. Beyond that, our weather patterns could be shifted by something else. Let's come back to the here and now, talk about this area of high pressure, as I said, not only at the surface, but high up, creating this split in the jet stream. And this is part of a, a global weather pattern that's been set in place for a number of days, if not weeks now, where we have uh, high pressure here, but also a big blocking area of high pressure repeated over central parts of Eurasia. And then there's another one as we head towards the Pacific. Now, this is the area we're focusing in on because this could spark a bit of a change. Now, the jet is kind of stuck in a, a waving pattern at the moment, which is why we're not seeing much in the way of movement with our pressure pattern. But we could start to see uh, something mix up because of this. This is Typhoon Marwa. It's been a very powerful typhoon churning away through the Pacific. It is now turning northwards. It's weakening a little bit, but still going to bring torrential rain to the southernmost parts of Japan. But for our weather, well, look what happens. It could interact with the jet stream and it could energize the jet stream as we go through the weekend and into the early part of next week. And this more energized jet stream is the kind of thing you need to mix things up a little bit. When the weather has been stuck, as it has been for a number of days, as I said, if not longer than that, then this is the kind of thing that can mix things up. This jet stream will then have a knock-on effect potentially across North America and then later on uh, across the Atlantic and potentially mix things up uh, for our part of the world as well. Now, if that were to happen, then it wouldn't be until uh, at least the, the middle part of June, really, for us to start to see uh, something of a change. And there's only a, a pretty weak signal that that could happen at the moment. So it's just something I'm highlighting, something that meteorologists here at the Met Office will be keeping an eye on over the next two or three days because it could potentially have a knock-on effect for our weather over the next uh, what, 10 to 14 days. So even though it's just high pressure, there's still plenty going on with the weather. There always is. Make sure you keep up to date with the very latest from the Met Office. And the best way to do that, of course, is to follow us across 